Merry Christmas, church, and welcome to worship on this first Sunday after Christmas. I hope you are taking in all of God's blessings as we wind down this challenging year and find ourselves perched in anticipation of what God will lead us toward in the fresh new year. Our virtual Bible study is on break until Tuesday, January 12th, when we will gather at 9.30 a.m. Our evening fellowship will also take a break until we meet for evening prayer on Thursday, January 14th at 3 p.m. You and yours are invited to join us for all or part of these conversations as we, God's people, share our thoughts and stories of faith and life and the glorious future God has in store. Friends, the celebration of the life of Helen Kronmuller will be Monday, December 28th at 11.30 a.m. at Bowie Funeral Home in Cave Springs. Next Sunday, January 3rd, we will celebrate Epiphany. That is the day when the light of the world leads the Magi to kneel in humility at the manger and leads us to shine light into our own hearts and minds as we listen to God's new plans for our lives, church, and community. One of the small ways we will practice our New Year discernment will be in a word study based on random distribution of Epiphany star words. Stay tuned for how you will obtain your Epiphany star word for inspiration in 2021. In addition to Epiphany, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper next Sunday. Please have your bread and cup available as we partake together virtually. Our church is busy, friends. Please remember us in your giving and in your prayers. And please consider how you might serve our God and neighbor through Church of the Master in the coming new year. Friends, this is the day that God has made for us. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
join me now as we are called to worship. When Jesus is born to Mary and Joseph, God is there. When they present Jesus at the temple, God is there. When Simeon holds Jesus in his arms, God is there. When Anna recognizes Jesus as the answer to prayer, God is there. This very morning, God is here. In the future we cannot see, God is there. Let us worship God. We are blessed, people of God, that each Sunday we come together and we lift to God those times during the week when we turned from God and neighbor. That is, we join our voices in the prayer of confession. Following that prayer, we are assured of God's grace, and we celebrate the forgiveness in Jesus Christ by singing our praise in song. This morning, I will lead us through our response, praise response to Jesus' forgiveness. This will not be a perfect rendition of glory to God whose goodness shines on me, but it will be a prayerful and faithful one. Follow along if you are able. We will be using this song of praise to lift to God over the course of the new year. Join me now, friends, as we bow our heads in confession. Simeon and Anna were steeped in revered tradition and yet spent their lives praying to recognize the action of God, pointing to a future they could not imagine. Far from being held back by tradition, for them it was a constant stretch toward faithfulness. Where is God at work? What are the signs? What needs to be let go, entrusted to a new way, new people, new and unexpected shape? Ways of being church are changing quickly in these COVID-19 days, and getting back to normal may mean a new normal. So in this moment, what are we clinging to, Church of the Master? What do we need to relinquish? 
so that we can recognize the call of God in this moment in time. The scriptures promise that God will make all things new. As God makes the new year new, may we and our ministry to God's people also be made new by God's love and forgiveness in Jesus. Amen. Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. Good morning, girls and boys. I hope that you are enjoying a wonderful Christmas time with your family and pets. I hope you have Zoomed and FaceTimed with all of the love faces in your life. And I hope you were able to gift everyone with exactly what they wanted from you. That is, your smile and your silliness and your wonderful self. This morning, I want to remind all of us that not everyone is having the holiday they dream of. In fact, some kids in our community and world don't even have enough food or water to drink or shoes, for goodness sake. It feels important, friends, that those of us with enough to share, that we pay attention to kids and families who need a little help because we will all need a little help at some point in our life. One of the best ways to show our love to God is by praying for other people, by being kind and grateful, and by telling everyone we know that they are loved by God. God loves everyone. And it's our job to tell people that God loves us. Let's say a prayer. And thank God for God's great love, as we are reminded to share the joy of Christmas with everyone we meet. Let us pray. God, we are excited to be children in the world. We ask your blessing on our families and our church and our community. And we ask you to remind us to tell everyone we know of your great love. And God, we thank you for your love this morning and always. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you next time. Take care. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. As Jesus own, we dare to share his peace one to another, saying, peace be with you and also with you. Amen. Oh,
Hear now a reading from the gospel according to Luke. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Simeon could hardly remember how it felt to move easily, to hear without straining. His tired old back would no longer straighten when he walked, and the slight tremor in his hands made it hard to attend to his daily needs. Simeon was a weary old man. He had spent his days worshiping God and praying for the future of Israel, the future of humankind. On this day, he fought sleep as he knelt in the temple asking God how much longer before scripture would be revealed, how much longer before the promised Messiah would come to save the broken world. Sometimes he could feel the tears well up in his eyes as he waited as he listened to God and called forth the Holy Spirit, which rested upon him. It was quiet in the temple today. Only a few had gathered with sacrifices in hand. Simeon's cloudy old eyes were drawn to a humble young family, bringing pigeons to offer to God. They were obviously a poor family, choosing the option of offering birds instead of the more expensive sheep. As he shook himself awake and began to move toward the family, Simeon was overcome by a profound sense of joy. Suddenly he was decades younger, he felt, silly almost, this overpowering sense of goodness, of giddiness really. He took that baby boy in his arms and he laughed and he laughed he threw back his ancient white head and he chuckled with glee. 
These tears were of unrestrained joy. God had fulfilled the promise, and Simeon knew it. God had freed this holy man who had been waiting a lifetime for this moment. God had freed Simeon to die peacefully. He had seen salvation, and he could now depart this world in peace. Now, Mary and Joseph were a bit intimidated. This was the first time they'd taken the child out into the world. Faithful Jews, they followed the strict Torah purification law by bringing the child to the temple when it was time. These were young, inexperienced parents, teenagers, really. They had only married a few months ago and felt some unease at the attention this baby seemed to be drawing. It was important to them to follow Torah law, which is how they found themselves in the temple this afternoon. When this old man grabbed the baby and began dancing around and belly laughing, Mary especially wished they had stayed home. And then when the really old woman who seemed to hold a permanent spot in front of the altar started hollering about redemption, both Mary and Joseph felt that stomach-churning truth. This baby was of God. This baby was not theirs, but the world's. It seemed that every time they turned around, this sleeping bundle of blankets caused grown adults to fall to their knees in adoration. This would be a wild ride. Raising this child would be unlike anything they had known or heard of. This holy baby came to life just like the rest of us. And we all know that special draw of a baby in the house. I've seen this so many times, especially in church, when a family brings their new baby to worship. Crowds gather Mature adults with responsibilities and jobs and mortgages, they cluster around a baby, cooing and clucking and patting and kissing like nothing else matters. We just can't get enough of babies. And it's the same with children. There is no joy as complete as being included in the simple lives of children. I believe that if we care for children well, if we listen and if we pay attention, they point us to our redemption, our consolation, our hope beyond hope in God's future. Our children teach us lessons we need to learn. Looking into the eyes of a child, we remember what it means to work hard at learning and understanding things. We remember what it means to ask questions to look at the world with wonder, to carefully explore new ideas. We remember what it feels like to discover things, to start something new, to make a new friend, or to make up with an old one. We remember how it felt to be an innocent, accidental peacemaker. We remember how it felt to be noticed, to be heard, to be loved and included. Our children, are the future, God's future, and who but God would know how to corral our distracted hearts and minds and spirits by coming into our lives as a round, cooing, pudgy little baby. Had our Savior come into this world with spectacle and pageantry, with royal power and might, this Savior would not be the humble Lord, fully human fully divine. This baby holds the promise of new life. This baby, while innocent and dependent, is a true gift, as they all are. This baby is our promise from God, fulfilled. These few days after Christmas, we may ask ourselves, where is the transformation? In real life, we seemingly remain unchanged unsaved by the magic of Christmas. And yet, there are children briefly entrusted to our care in our communities, church, and world. 
We pray that their lives will be grand with wisdom and courage and that they will make the world better. When we hold a child in our arms as Simeon cradled baby Jesus in his, our own life seems literally recentered, not in ourselves, but just in front of us. It's around this present future, this vulnerable and miraculous little one, that our universe bends. It's just a child who teaches us, leads us, and ultimately saves us from ourselves. Like Simeon, we have now seen the future promised of God. We have held the Christ child in our imaginations. We have coddled and kissed him with words and song, caressed his presence. We have knelt before his small being, and we have been changed just a little. No big miracles, no mysterious signs, no visions, just a baby, just our very God, sleeping and crying and eating. And like all children, he grew in strength and wisdom. And like each and every child in your life and mine, the favor of God was upon him. Alleluia. Amen. It is so true, sisters and brothers, that our good God hears our prayers and responds. Please join me now as we pray for God's people in the name of Jesus Christ. God of untamed glory, God of hope and peace and joy and love, God with us, we come before you filled with awe, freshly aware of the world's wild beauty, of your amazing grace, of your living word embodied in human flesh born amid dirt and straw. We are astonished at creation's spirit drawing breath with tiny lungs. In the faithful yes of young Mary's soul, in the labor of her child's birth, we dare to believe that it is you, O God, who comes to live among us in Jesus, a peasant Jew. We give thanks that you are not ruler of some far away, irrelevant, heavenly realm. No, Lord, you have drawn close to us in an infant child, born in ancient Palestine, but nearer than a heartbeat away. Born in poverty, cradled in a borrowed manger, threatened by the soldiers of a tyrant, you are at one with the least of the earth. Draw near to us, O God of tender mercies. Draw near to those with whom we share our lives. Draw near to people who are hurting in any kind of pain, who are anxious, lonely, ill, afraid. Lord, by your healing, empowering love, teach us new ways of living. Help us to cherish and care for one another. Help us to nurture life where it is unprotected and to celebrate it where it is strong and healthy. We seek to be witnesses of your love in the world, and we pray in the holy name of Jesus, the babe of Bethlehem, who taught us when we gather and pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, sisters and brothers, we hear again the opportunity to share with God our life and labor. God calls us to give as we have received, 
in this Christmas season when we when God has shared his God's child with us help us to share our blessing with those in need please send in your tithes and offerings as we continue to glorify God with our life and our treasures pray with me now as we dedicate our gifts May these gifts enable for others the blessings we receive this Christmas, the gift of a childlike wonder, the gift of a radiant hope, the gift of a peace that passes all understanding, the gift of a joy which knows no bounds. With our gifts, we bring ourselves, O God, in response to the greatest gift of all, yourself in the babe of Bethlehem. Amen. And now, may the gift of God's beloved child bring peace to you and yours this holiday season, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> 